Clay Thompson may have played his last game as a warrior, but he would never leave Steph and Draymond. Well, it turns out other teams may want Clay bad. The most plugged in reporter at the Athletics said, one of the worst kept secrets in the league is that Orlando, loaded with young talent, but not with shooters, might offer Clay a ton of money next summer. And you know who won't? Golden State. They have major problems this offseason, but there is a ton to break down. First, cap space, none, obviously, but they have a mid-level exception, which is kind of like a gift card that you can use on players, no matter how much cap space you have. Draft, they have about a 3% chance to keep their own pick if it lands in the top four. Otherwise, it goes to Portland. Key free agents, Clay, Gary Payton II, and Dario Saric. Needs? a backup point guard if Chris Paul leaves, a stretch for athletic wings and defense. Assets in a trade. Well, technically they've got three first round picks and we'll explain that more later. Ton of swaps and young talent like Jonathan Kaminga. Oh, and we will get to those trades. But how did this happen? But first, the NBA playoffs are almost here and I am playing Underdog Fantasy. Pick them is my favorite game. You pick higher or lower for your favorite games or whatever players you want to watch that night. You can up to 20 extra your money on a single night. And if you sign up with promo code AMHOOPS, you will get a guaranteed pick to hit. Tonight's pick is Jimmy Butler for the plan game. Let me show you my two other picks. First up is Joel Embiid, his assists are at five. We're gonna go less, has never hit this against Miami, which is crazy. Then Trey Young, his assists are at 10 and a half. We're going higher. He's been hitting this number recently. And best of luck if you are tailing those picks, check out this updated map to see if Underdog is available in your area. Always use the promo code AMHOOPS. They will double your deposit up to 100 bucks. Plus, that Jimmy Butler pick tonight, that is code AMHOOPS. You might say it's Draymond's fault. If he didn't get suspended, they'd be a top six team. And that's correct. Draymond did screw them, but it's so much bigger than that. This goes back to the two timeline plan. The Warriors had a chance to trade assets for good players, extend the dynasty. Oh, but they had to keep the number two pick in James Wiseman. By the time they were ready to trade him, he had no value. They held on to Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody. I know they're good young players, but Steph needs vets. The man played 74 games this season, the most in seven years. You think he's tired? He can't wait around for a 21-year-old Kaminga to mature into a superstar, if that'll ever happen. All he gets for big vets is Andrew Wiggins. Great. Now, teams won't even trade for Wiggs because 2022 was a fluke. The two timeline risk was that the young guys can't help the old guys. Then after the old guys are gone, the young guys aren't even that good anyway. It's only two timelines with a second timeline. Otherwise, it's one timeline and then we suck. But we can't change the past, so what happens now? Well, right when Clay was figuring it out, he has the worst game of his career. Ever since he got benched, Clay averaged 19 points on 42% from three. He then got the starting job back, but in Sacramento, zero points going 0 for 10 from the field. He played 32 minutes. Can you imagine a Hall of Fame player playing 32 minutes in an NBA game and scoring zero points? All that progress was for nothing. Combine that with his three for 19 game last year, game six against the Lakers. That is two straight elimination games. Clay got exposed. So did the Warriors even want him back? Yes. Steve Kerr said, he is meant to be a warrior for life. Steph said, I can never see myself not with Clay and Draymond, but what if someone else offers him more money and a bigger role? Clay still has a lot of pride and some other team might give him the opportunity to get that back. Well, how much can the Warriors actually put on the table? The owner, Joe Lacob, has spent more than anyone to win chips. Since 2014, the year before the first title, Dub's ownership has paid 677 million in taxes. Not salary, just taxes. Now, he just paid an all-time record high for a team. 384 million for a 10 seed. Who could blame the man if he wants to cut costs? So Lakeup said, our plan one, or 1A, is that we'd like to be out of the tax and we think we have a way to do that. Oh, there's a way. And Clay's not gonna like it. Step one is to waive Chris Paul. He makes 30 million next year, but that's not guaranteed. So bye-bye CP. Then you re-sign Clay on a cheap contract just to have enough to improve the team with one more player. I think they'd offer Clay like 18 million. That's the same as like a Grayson Allen just got, who's also just a shooter. 
And is Clay okay with 18? What if another team offers more? The Orlando Magic have up to 60 million in cap space. They also need a player like Clay. Orlando finished 29th in three point shooting this year. They've got a top three defense, but they can't score when it counts. Clay would be a great vet for them, like the Rockets just got with Fred Van Vliet. Other teams with cap space are the Spurs, Sixers, Thunder, Pistons, Jazz. Oh, Dallas is rumored to be interested. So the Dubs better not lowball Clay, or he could be gone. But one thing Joe Lickham also promised is no teardown. As long as they have Steph Curry, they will try to win. So how can they do that? Well, one way is letting Clay walk and trading Chris Paul's salary with assets for a great player. Last year, they made calls on OG Ananobi and Pascal Siakam. They even asked LeBron if he wanted to come, but none of those were really big enough to get done. So what could they do this offseason to change everything? Steph is 36 years old. They can't wait long. So a lot depends on what happens these playoffs. There are several dream scenarios for the dubs. Number one is the Milwaukee Bucks collapsing in round one. Giannis has a calf strain and will not start the Pacers series. Damian Lillard tried his best without Giannis to beat the Magic. Lost so bad they scored 88 points. That is what Dame looks like right now without Giannis. Horrible sign for Milwaukee. Now reports say Dame is so unhappy he might want another trade. So if they lose bad, we know Giannis values winning over loyalty. And the Bucks have tried everything. I mean, they fired Coach Bud, then fired his replacement for Doc Rivers, traded Drew Holiday for Damian Lillard. No moves left. So would he go to the dubs? Well, the Warriors' best possible offer is Giannis for Chris Paul, Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Moody, Brandon Pazimski, three first round picks, in three swaps. By the way, they've already traded that 2030 pick, but they could still trade it with the top 20 involved because it's protected that way. So that's a core of Steph, Giannis, and Draymond. Bring back Clay and minimum players. Maybe they have one more run left. But another hope is the LA Clippers. If they get embarrassed by Dallas, maybe Paul George wants out. The only way to get him would be with a sign and trade. PG isn't, you know, elite like Giannis, but he would easily be the dubs number two and he would fit the roster. One guy who's not a fit, Donovan Mitchell. Reports say if the Cavs crash and burn, he wants out. Why not go after him? I mean, yes, he's not a front court player like PG and Giannis, but at least he's an all-star. Steph needs scoring. The problem would be burning all your trade assets for a dude who could leave in free agency next year. All these options are unlikely, but a lot can change based on how these playoffs shake out. If the dubs want to upgrade quick, there will be a lot of competition for all these stars. So what about a more realistic deal for two smaller players? Well, Golden State could attach Andrew Wiggins' contract for a lesser player, like Jarrett Allen and George Niang for Wiggs and Jonathan Kaminga. JK is exactly the type of wing that the Cavs are missing. And if they wanna break up that Allen Mobley front court, maybe this works. Look, we just saw the Kings dominate in the paint. A big like Jared Allen would be perfect. Then another trade like Dorian Finney-Smith and Dennis Schroeder for Chris Paul in two first round picks. The Dubs get a great 3 and D wing and DFS and a backup point in Schroeder to replace CP3. Look, it's not a perfect move, but if Golden State can't get a star trade done and they need to upgrade this offseason, then multiple small deals is realistic. So the NBA just banned Jonte Porter for life. That's Michael Porter Jr.'s brother. He's the guy who illegally bet on himself on the Raptors. And if you wanna know the entire backstory, it is spicy.